As we do every week, it's time to speak to the author of groundbreaking works, international bestsellers, including The War on the West, The Strange Death of Europe and The Madness of Crowds. Douglas Murray, let's start in New Zealand. They're going to the polls on October 14, the day we vote on the race-based referendum. They'll be holding their general election and the polls aren't looking good for the left with Labor polling at just a little under 28%. The Greens have fallen to around 10.6% with the latest polls. It's looking like New Zealand, Douglas, is going to have a centre-right coalition and Winston Peters may be the kingmaker. It wasn't too long ago Ago when uh, their Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern was the darling of the global left, but she's left New Zealand in an almighty mess. Yes, she has. And uh, what a wonderful thing it would be. I'm always worried about tempting fate. But what a wonderful thing it would be if the New Zealand electorate showed that they had learned a lesson from Jacinda Ardern's premiership. You know, this is, this is somebody who promised the earth and uh, promised absolute heaven to the people of New Zealand and delivered something pretty close to hell, actually, during the COVID period. She spent all of her time emoting and showing how emotional she was, but she didn't seem to have very much care for the people that she was emoting over. Um, I, I really do hope <laughs> that the public in New Zealand realise that there is a difference between that sort of fake, fraudulent, uh, empathetic type of politician and people who actually have the care of the country in their hands and deal with it and treat it appropriately. Uh, New Zealand is a great country and it deserves to be led by people who do more than just expect the world to think that they're the empathiser in chief. Now, from uh, Jacinda Ardern to the male Jacinda Ardern, Justin Trudeau, you wrote an excellent piece about Canada's descent into ignorance. Uh, we've got a leader there who's uh, another media darling who likes to cultivate this image of being caring and progressive, but he's in the habit of calling decent, ordinary Canadians Nazis. He's used measures, Douglas, such as debanking to punish his critics. We've seen all sorts of sinister attacks against against free speech. Douglas, what has happened in Canada? Well, I, I made this intervention in the Canadian debate this week in the great National Post, the, 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 I think perhaps the only remaining decent newspaper in, uh, in Canada, um, uh, because I wanted to say to the Canadian public, you have no idea what the rest of the world thinks of you now. Um, I think the rest of the world's image of Canada has tumbled enormously during the time that this superannuated drama teacher has been running Canada. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'll give, I give us one example, just that extraordinary thing that happened the other week in the Canadian Parliament. They, they had a President Zelensky of Ukraine there, and they embarrassed him and gave a massive propaganda win to the Russians. Why? Because it turned out that the Speaker had in, of the House of, of, of Commons in, in the, the, the Parliament in, in Canada had invited a 98-year-old Ukrainian who fought the Soviets in the 1940s, and everybody got got up. Everybody got up in the Canadian Parliament, gave this man a standing ovation. Now you don't have to be a history buff to know that a Ukrainian fighting the Soviets in the 1940s was highly likely to be fighting with the Nazis. And, of course, the man did turn out to have been mm. not just a, with the Nazis, but a member of the SS. And, you know, just the most basic historical knowledge should have kicked in there, let alone all the security checks and anything like that. But what I find fascinating about it is this is what happens when a country loses its adults, when ignoramuses who think they know everything take charge. Justin Trudeau thinks he can spot a Nazi at a million miles uh, from, from the whiff of their exhaust fumes or the mere uh, happenstance that they crit criticise him. He can tell a Nazi then, but a Nazi, an actual SS Nazi, is in a gallery above him and he's giving a standing ovation, and as is the whole of the parliament. This is just one example of what happens when your society gets riddled by stupidity because of stupid leaders. I give plenty of other examples in the piece, but I think that Canadians mm. should think really seriously, like the people of New Zealand, about what sort of leadership they actually want. 
Well, I think you described it perfectly a while back when you wrote about Justin Trudeau and uh, Jacinda Ardern, and you talked about performative caring. They, they present this image of being caring, but you look at actually the policies they've implemented and the impact they've had on their countries, and it ain't caring at all. Now, let's go to the US and the ongo ongoing uh, border crisis there is having an impact in sanctuary cities like New York and Chicago, and folks who keep voting for these policies are now objecting. Guess the reality is not as rosy as the virtue signaling. You cannot keep bringing immigrants in. The city does not have the money. You cannot track them. You ain't tracking them good at the police station. You don't know their name, but you want to spare them all over the city. It is unsanitary, it's unsafe, and it's just not right. There was some Chicago lo locals objecting to illegal immigrants being released in their city. Douglas, we currently have the New York mayor in Mexico over this crisis, and we learned today that the Democrats are building Trump's wall. NBC reports the Biden administration announced it waived 26 federal laws to permit more border wall construction in southern Texas, a move that builds on one of the most controversial cornerstones of the Trump administration. How about that, Douglas? I know. Um, I, I suspect now, Rita, uh, of course, the people who criticised Trump for building the wall criticised it because it was basically, uh, uh, again, a Nazi-like policy to have a wall. It was far right. Uh, it was extremist and much more. I think we will find in the coming days as the Biden administration tries to grapple with this policy too late, that the Biden wall will be a caring wall, Rita. It'll be a compassion <laughs> wall. It'll be rebranded. It'll be totally different. In the same way that all of these things, they, they all change. You know, when, um, when, when people like me say, you know, you can't have uncontrolled immigration. You need to have a reasonable system of asylum and a reasonable system of, of legal immigration, but not mass illegal uh, uh, migration. That's, that's very right-wing and controversial, of course, in the eyes of Democrats. But now, of course, as you mentioned, the mayor of New York, Mayor Adams, a Democrat himself, is saying all the sorts of things that people like me have said for years. And... Uh, but of course, they say it in a, in a far more caring way, and in a, in a in a in a way that's totally different and has totally different branding, Rita. And I'm sure you'll agree with me that there's just some strange alchemy in the world whereby things become correct as long as the left suddenly catches up with them. Of course, it's all about the branding. Because I do recall back when Trump wanted the war, they said it would be a monument to white supremacy and, like you said, fascist and racist. But now it's a caring wall. And finally, Douglas, on law and order, that's another big issue in the US across so many cities. And we continue to see some soft on crime responses in Democrat cities that are just uh, make you shake your head. Look at New York, where a Manhattan college professor who threatened a New York Post reporter with a machete, this was all caught on tape, well, they've dodged jail. And Shelley Rodriguez won't even have a criminal record, Douglas, if she does a few months of therapy. Uh, how can this be? How can you threaten someone with a machete and pretty much get a slap on the wrist. You know, uh, uh, this this issue of crime in the States is so serious, Rita, and, and I, I hope that other countries, other democracies learn from it. I hope America manages to sort this out, but there isn't very much sign uh, of it at the moment. Not far from here in Brooklyn the other night, a, a young man was stabbed to death randomly while sitting on a bench with his girlfriend. Um, and I was in Philadelphia earlier this week and a left-wing activist and a decent guy by all accounts, but, you know, just was killed in his apartment. So, you see, the authorities say, well, you just stay safe, the general public. But it turns out that um, it's, it's not safe to go out. It's not safe to stay in. It's not safe to, to use the subway, the metro. Uh, like... Uh, there's a sort of constricting number of circumstances in which Americans are, are actually safe. And this is because of crazy bail laws, crazy left-wing justices and DAs, district attorneys, uh, who push this idea that the problem is prison and the always prison. 
And no, the problem is the crime. Uh, if you've got a lot of criminals mm -hmm. on the street, you should lock them up. Unfortunately, at the moment in American cities, they're led by Democrats and the people in the cities are suffering, suffering so badly from this. I just hope, again, going back to where we started with New Zealand, that at some point the electorate actually wake up and realise this and do something about it and vote in tough on crime candidates in cities like New York and Philadelphia. We'll see if they do. But it's a very sad picture for the state of the United States of America.